America's pastime, baseball in the Roaring Twenties. Baseball in the 1920s was known as America's pastime because they had so many big name players that made the game famous as it is today, including George Herman Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth started as a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox and they won the World Series in 1918. In 1919, he led the league in, in homers, was 29. He was then traded to the Yankees. Wow, that was a mistake. Boston wouldn't win the World Series again in 2004. It was known as a curse. Ruth led the league in home runs 12 years out of his 22 year career. Yes, he did. In just his first year with the Yankees, he led the league with 54 home runs. The next year, he led the league with 59 home runs. In 1927, he led the league with 60 home runs. That was a record for a long time and to the player by the name of Roger Maris broke on October 1st, 1961. Maris had 61 homers that year and he also played with the Yankees. He's now in the Hall of Fame and some people think of him as the greatest of all time. And some people think of this guy as the greatest player of all time. Lou the Iron Horse Gehrig. Lou Gehrig was a first baseman for the New York Yankees in the 1920s. And he was known as the Iron, Iron Horse. Yes, he was. And I'll explain that later. But right now, I want to discuss the Wally Pibb story. Wally Pibb was a first baseman for the New York Yankees from 1915 to 1925. In the middle of the 1925 season, Wally Pibb asked his manager, Miller Hugens, if he could sit out for the game because he had a really bad headache. So it just happens to be that Lou, Ke Lou Gehrig came into the game and Wally Pibb never got the start in the Yankees uniform ever again. No, he didn't. Okay, now the reason why Lou Gehrig was known as the Iron Horse was because he didn't miss a game in his career. He made a record of 2,130 consecutive games played. That'd be a record for a long time. But in the beginning of the 1939 season, Gehrig came down with something. So he got it checked out, and he found out he had ALS. And here is one of the most famous speeches of all time. Ball's Iron Man, in Yankee Stadium, touched to tears by the tribute, Gary made his last public appearance. For the past two the past weeks, two weeks you've been reading about, about a bad Greg. Greg. Today, Today, I consider, I consider myself, myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face on of the, the face earth. Of the earth. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it privilege to associate yourself with such a fine looking man as a standing in uniform in this ballpark today? That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. That was one of the saddest speeches of all time, and maybe one of the best. He was the best first baseman ever, definitely, and maybe one of the best player of all time. Roger Hornsby. Roger Hornsby was the second baseman for the St. Louis Cardinals from 1915 to 1926, and he was pretty good. He also played with the New York Giants which is not a baseball team anymore. He also played with the Boston Braves, which are now the Atlanta Braves. He also played with the Cubs and the St. Louis Browns. They don't exist anymore. His best years came in 1920 to 1922. In 1920, Hornsby had 218 hits, nine home runs, and a batting average of 370. 1921, he had 235 hits, 21 homers, and a batting average of 397. 397 isn't even possible now. In the 1922, 
he had 250 hits, 42 home runs, and a batting average of 401. Incredible. Okay, now I'm going to talk about these guys' individual career stats. Roos was a four-time World Series champion, a one-time MVP, because the MVP did not exist until 1930. At 714 career home runs, third most of all time. Lou Gehrig was a six-time World Champion Series champion, one-time Triple Crown winner. 2,130 consecutive games played, second most of all time. 1,995 runs batted in, sixth most of all time. Roger Hornsby was a two-time MVP, two-time Triple Crown winner, 1926 World Series champion, a .358 career batting average, second best of all time. These guys are all in the Hall of Fame now. Those were the best players of the 1920s and the best players of, Amer of America's pastime. Thank you for watching this presentation.